Hello, I'm Mike Wilkins, Managing Director of Infrastructure Finance at Standard & Poor's. Today in Credit Matters TV, we are going to be discussing the UK National Health Service, or NHS. NHS Acute Hospital Trusts face mounting pressure as they seek to deliver savings of more than 4% per year against a backdrop of structural reforms that could affect the predictability of future revenues. Some trusts are facing significant inflation-linked private finance initiative, or PFI, payments that are likely to rise faster than their revenues. At the same time, the consequences of the structural reforms proposed in the Health and Social Care Bill 2011 could weaken the predictability of their future revenues. With me to discuss these issues, I have Hugo Foxwood, Associate Director of International Public Finance at Standard & Poor's and author of a recent report on the NHS Trust's current financial challenges. Welcome Hugo. First of all, um, it's been reported that NHS Trusts are under a lot of financial pressure, particularly those with PFIs. Is this affecting our ratings on PFI transactions? It isn't affecting our ratings at the moment, but I think it is fair to say that the more strain that NHS trusts come under, the more strain their relationships with PFI providers is likely to be under. Part of the way PFI works is that if a trust thinks performance of a PFI provider is below a certain standard, then they can impose a penalty deduction or, or ultimately kind of terminate the contract. So there could be financial implications of these strained relationships. Right. Um, but if an NHS trust uh, with a PFI actually goes bankrupt, wouldn't PFI investors just lose all their money? Well, an NHS trust can't exactly go bankrupt, but even if it did default on its PFI payment, we expect that the Secretary of State will make the payment on the trust's behalf. And the Secretary of State's obligation to do this is set out in the deed of safeguard or, or in deeds of safeguard. Uh, now, these deeds of safeguard, they don't constitute formal guarantees to make payments on time. and. In theory, um, there might be certain circumstances in which the obligations aren't valid, but in practice, we believe it's very likely that the Secretary of State would make payments to PFI uh, companies if trusts were unable to make them themselves. It's, it's been said that a number of NHS trusts are actually financially unsustainable. Do you think we'll see NHS trusts defaulting on their PFI payments? Well, I don't think it's very likely. I mean, admittedly, if you look at the financials of certain NHS trusts, they can look quite alarming. But it's not so alarming if you view it in the context of how the system works. Trusts, by and large, are paid for their activity according to a national tariff, despite the fact that some trusts have very different cost bases to others. So, for instance, a trust might have a higher than average cost base because of expensive new facilities, possibly built through a PFI transaction, or because of, say, surplus capacity, unused capacity that there's not the political willingness to close down because of the sensitivities around hospital closures. Um, so that trust may well need reimbursement through additional funding in order to, to survive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we know that there are NHS reforms that are currently being debated in the House of Lords, which is the upper tier of the UK uh, Parliament. Um, do you think these reforms, as they currently stand, could change our view on the creditworthiness of NHS trusts? Well, at this stage, it's actually quite difficult to answer that question. Um, certainly in the initial draft of the bill, it, it looked with the way it was worded that there was going to be a, a significant reduction in regulatory support for NHS trusts, which might have indicated a, a weakening of the link with government. Um, however, the government's latest proposal is that a lot of the existing regulatory safeguards would actually remain in place until 2016, which is of course the other side of a general election. Um, some of the reforms to the commissioning system um, could certainly affect the sort of predictability of the revenues for certain trusts, particularly mm -hmm. if they're combined with an increase in, in competition. Mm -hmm. um, the government is also looking at, at rewriting the insolvency regime, but that's 
likely to be one of the most kind of controversial bits right. that's debated in the House of Lords. So, so really too early to, to say what the effect will be. But certainly for the next few years, given the high kind of mm -hmm. importance of the, of the public policy role that the NHS has for the government, and also the, with the nature of the government's ultimate liabilities mm -hmm. uh, for, for the NHS, both in terms of its PL, PFI obligations and the money that the government has lent to NHS trusts. Um, it's actually quite hard to see why the government would want to allow NHS trusts to default. So, although there may be hospital closures and, and reconfigurations, I'd expect this to be done in, in an orderly manner without actually leading to any cash defaults. Right. Okay. Well, thanks very much, Hugo. And that about wraps it up for this issue of Credit Matters TV. I'm Mike Wilkins from Standard & Poor's. Thank you very much and wishing you a good day. Goodbye.